Good day, everyone. This is Pineleaf Needles, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and here at DDO Players. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Draculetta. Hey, greetings, everyone. Hope everybody's doing great tonight. Yes, you wish them to have a good evening. I was going to do that, but I thought that would be a little corny, but... <laughs> All right. We'll go All with right. it. <laughs> All right. We'll begin with... The hot fix for update 24, which was implemented on December 18th, and looks like they had a little change in airships on traveling to the Hall of Heroes with your guild airship now puts you in the airship entrance of the Ebron Halls of Heroes. Or where was it putting it before the hot fix? I don't know because we I don't have an airship from my guild yet, so I don't know. All, all right, and the Barbarian's Tireless Rage now properly grants its strength, constitution, and will save bonuses. I'm sure a lot of Barbarians are happy about that now. And there are also a couple of extra fixes concerning class, concerning the Barbarian and the Washbuckler and the Monk Shinato Core Enhancement. Epic Destinies fixed the issue with the tooltip description of adrenaline. Well, that's rather vague. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of these fixes were just kind of little small tiny ones. There was really no, nothing really big actually that jumped yeah. out at me, but you know. It's, yeah. always, it's always good to get the little small quality of life fixes though. Yeah, I'm surprised that some of these things they did in the hot fix rather than saving for the next major update. Right. True. True. All right. Uh, fixed an issue that prevented vendors from selling items for astral shards. That sounds like to me the reason for the hot fix. That would definitely be a hot fixable item. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And fix an issue that could cause breakable floors to not display properly in the Hearts of Madness. Which I saw on the forums, there was uh, quite a bit of talk about that. I guess basically there was one part, uh, you couldn't actually finish the quest, it sounded like, because you had to break the floor, but the floor wasn't showing up as breakable, so you couldn't actually break it. So, uh, yeah, that was a good hotfix item, too. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's very definitely a hotfix item, yes. So therefore, fixing up a major bug, that was probably the primary one, though I'm sure the financial officer office made sure they put in the NPC fix. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> So let's go into our next item where we had DDO Chronicle issue 123. We're getting closer to 125. Yes, I wonder if they'll do something spectacular. No, they'll probably wait till like 150 to do something spectacular for. All right. And are you one who's really encouraged by the virtues of the Flaming Sphere spell? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was in the uh, community spotlight. You can uh, check to read that out. A uh, person by Seiki, I'm going to say, I guess. Yeah. Saki, Seiki. Um, Also, Shroudapalooza. I have to say that because I love saying that. That's like my my favorite saying here here lately is Shroudapalooza. Uh, That adds to, well, actually, that was on Kyber. Uh, last Saturday, I'm not sure where Bonnie is taking the Shroudapalooza next, but uh, be sure to look at the Chronicle to find out. You can also check out the forums as well. I know uh, Bonnie Boo posts on the forums where the uh, next event's going to be held as well, too. And if you're not quite sure, you might be thinking, what the heck is Shroudapalooza? <laughs> Bonnie <laughs> That's Boo- a good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bonnie Boo is basically going on every server and she's running the Shroud Raid. And she's teaching people how to do the Shroud Raid. So it's kind of a cool little event she's got going on. And quite the spiffy little name she came up for it. So if you've ever <laughs> wanted to do the Shroud Raid, if you're you're flagged for it and you can do it, um, you can actually do it with somebody that teaches you how to do it. And every server will be done once. Just once. Just once. All right. I presume that she'll do our server the week before we're qualified to do the raid, right? Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to see if she knew when she was going to do Kenneth and to see. I think we're pretty much almost ready to do that one, though. I think we have like two more, maybe three more quests to do, but we'll have to check. All right. Very well. Then let's go to the great MMO face-off 
we had a bit of a surprise on the Lotro end where we upset WoW. So I wonder, does that mean that DDO is going to upset Eve? Not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the final tally was uh, DDO 47.1% to EBS 52.9%. So we didn't uh, get beat too awful bad, but alas, we lost in the quarterfinals, though. So it looks like uh, Lotro will go up against EVE next round. And it looks like Guild Wars 2 will be up against uh, Elder Scrolls next round. For the final, it looks like. So should be interesting to see who wins between those two. All right. Very well. Then let's... Who are you rooting for? <laughs> who am I rooting for? Let's see. See, that's kind of tough. See, I'm I'm in a really tough position with this whole content. And I really was uh, last week. Because I'm also on a Lotro podcast, and funny being, I'm also on a Guild Wars podcast. So, do I vote for Lotro? Do I go Guild Wars? Uh, it's going to be tough to decide, especially if those two go up against each other at some point. Then I'm really going to – that's going to be a real tough decision, but – We'll see what happens when we cross that bridge, I guess. All right. Very well. Then let's look at your opportunity to get a free snowy owlbear creature companion. And how does one do this? They, um, I should say they, that being Turbine, is giving these away. There is two ways to get them. Um, and some people are going to go, uh, no, no, I'm not doing this. I know this. But you can like them on Facebook. I know there's a lot of Facebook is evil out there. But that's all you have to do is just like them on Facebook. And if you've already liked them on Facebook, you can still get the code. Basically, they'll be, once you go on the DDO page on Facebook, there'll be a little thing that says get Snowy Owlbear Companion. Just click on that. And then you just click on another thing. And then you get your code. Or you can do it via Twitter, uh, basically the same thing, uh, follow them on Twitter, just go to the link that they provide in the uh, forum post, and uh, you can get your code via OfferPop. Just then again, there's some people that are kind of going, ew, OfferPop, but <laughs> it's kind of the nature of the beast when you're doing giveaways on social media, you have to use these things to make your giveaways go a little smoothly so well, what are you gonna do but who doesn't want the little snowy albauer running around by him though we will have to find out if next week everybody in ddo is running around with a <laughs> snowy out there that's right we'll say see people actually did the giveaway then um yeah this, so this is pretty neat uh they just kind of are doing this for the holidays they just want to thank everybody for liking ddo and playing ddo and this is just a little something the devs are uh, doing for us so Go either to Facebook or Twitter and get your code and get your little owlbear. All right. Very well, then. Let's go into our store sales for this week. Anything nice on sale this week? It's free sample of the week is good if you're not a rogue. Our artificer, it's a secret door divining rod. Use the coupon code OPEN19. Once again, that coupon code is OPEN19. And you get one rod per account. So choose wisely on which character you want to use it on. It's a divining rod? Mm Mm-hmm. But if it's a divining rod, wouldn't that be something that looks for secret doors instead of opening them? Yes. Then why is it open 19 instead of find 19? I don't know. Don't use logic on the on the coupon codes. You should know that by now. <laughs> None of these coupon codes make sense ever. Well, I can't say ever, but usually coupon codes do not make sense in Turbine's world. Uh, All right, continue. <laughs> 25% off the Guild Renown Elixirs, the Ability Stat Tomes, Veteran Status, and the 32-point build. The December special running through Christmas is... 35% off bag deposit box upgrades, 75% off the Shatterkai Iconic Hero, which I highly recommend, just for the record. <laughs> 50% off the plus four skill tomes and plus four skill tome upgrades. Also 50% off the augment bags. And they are running a pretty sweet special right now through January 5th. If you are looking for some turbine points, you can get double the points. 
So now is a good time to stock up on the TP. If That's double bonus points. Double bonus points, yes. I'm sorry. I should have clarified that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not double points. <laughs> yeah, double points would be awesome. That, that would have been really been an awesome <laughs> deal, yes. Yeah. So, yep, that is, like I said, now is a good time to uh, get some points. All right, very well. And are there any other giveaways in store for us? There is, if you go to our site. As a matter of fact, 1,550 turbine points could be yours. <laughs> All you have to do is enter, uh, just enter a comment in that post. And we will randomly draw by a wonderful random.org. A number, we assign every comment a number. We draw that number and we find our winner. And this giveaway, of course, is thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. They made this giveaway possible. So thank you to everyone on Patreon. All right. Thank you very much. And here we are in... Uh, we finally have another chapter of Arcane Adventures with Dorfin Fizzlebeard and, of course, his friend, the skeleton, who is a bit of a hypocrite, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Right. And today he was making a couple of mistakes where, first of all, he undid a mistake by going in and deciding to go and protect a box. Of course, every other box in the area he decided to destroy, but this box he protected. Isn't that the way we usually do the quest? That's the way you usually do that quest, yes. Yes. <laughs> and after that, he decided not to do the follow-up, even though it allowed him to break up lots and lots of crates. Instead, he decided to steal a gem from a, from a prophet and I was really surprised where he actually managed to finish that quest because I've never managed to do that. Well, see, I was going to say his biggest mistake was even trying to do that quest. <laughs> <laughs> I hate stealthy repossession. Oh, I hate that quest. Even yeah. as a rogue, I hate that quest. Oh, even as a rogue? Yes, even as a rogue, I hate that quest. Oh, okay. I, I, I assumed that if anyone could do it, it would have been a rogue. That's the only character I've actually been able to do it successfully on. And that was just by sheer luck. But I tried it on, I think it was my, I don't remember who I tried it on. I tried it on one other character, and yeah, it didn't work at all. It was just that, I hate that quest. All right. And I can see why he had some reservations about that quest as well. Yes. Of course, it didn't help. I I guess it didn't help that uh, hypocrisy was killing everything for him. (laughs) Well, yes, there is that. Now, of course. As skeletons are wont to do, you know. Right. Now, my question is, is there anyone out there who actually does like this? If you like this particular quest and give us a good reason what makes it a great quest, then please leave a comment to our episode show notes so that we can read this and tell us why it's such a great quest sure because you probably I'm... won't believe you but... <laughs> yeah because i, I want to see somebody actually say they like this quest yes <laughs> just saying just saying very well and since it is the holiday season it is time for our friends, the wizards out by the coast, to tell us what the D&D 12 Days of Christmas are. So therefore, would you like to have a jewel-encrusted staff of charming? Everybody wants that. Come on. Right. Are the dancing swords? Everybody wants those, too. So. Oh, yes. Those dancing <laughs> swords would be wonderful. Especially if you've got five of them dancing around and uh, killing everything else while you are... <laughs> Handle it. That's an entire party right there. That would be an entire party. That's right. Yeah, this was just a cute little video. If you haven't watched it yet, you just need to go watch it. It's just a cute little day. Basically, what they did is they took the 12 Days of Christmas song and they uh, put it to what the DM gave people all 12 days. And it's to get in the Christmas spirit, if that's the case. The Christmas spirit. This Christmas spirit is a wraith, right? Mm, could be. Yeah. See, that would be awesome. if If that was the case, that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, let's go to our week in DDO. What did you do this week? Well, I took my – I have a level 2 rogue that was sitting on Corthos Island waiting for something to do. And lo and behold, I found out something to do. <laughs> a friend of mine was uh, – who I actually started playing with. He was one of them 
that I started playing with when I first started playing DDO and then everybody like abandoned me. <laughs> um, we, he started playing again. Uh, he basically started playing with his kids, but he had a character that he was kind of doing not with his kids and he has a monk. So we decided that we would do Corthos Island together. Ah. So we went out and we did uh, Hate and Thrust, Kenneth Crystal, Kenneth Crystal, I should say, the Collaborator and the Stonehouse Secret. Um, and I got this itch in my mind. I thought, you know what? Let's let, let's try these on hard. Why not? What's the worst thing that could happen? And you know, we didn't do bad. We actually were okay until we got to the first boss that you have to kill in Hayton's Rest. And then I remembered, oh yeah, they added champions in hard mode. <laughs> okay, yes. Maybe yeah. that's what the guy who said he didn't like Update 15 was talking about. <laughs> yeah, n- n- needless to say, uh, I got killed in like two hits. Uh, he survived a little longer, but then he died. So I went out and rezzed, came back in, grabbed his stone, got him re-rezzed. Uh, then we, we decided to go in and try to kill him off, and we finally got him. I died again. I had him down to where he had one hit point left. So all my buddy had to do was just like hit him one time, and, and he finally killed him. But I don't know what champions, because that's the only time I've ever ran into a champion, and that was on level two. But holy crap, are they hard to kill. Well, I think he <laughs> did say that they were going to be challenging. <laughs> and then we ran into one in the collaborator that was just as bad. It was insane. It's just like, holy crap. So if you want to challenge, ran, run stuff uh, on Hard and Elite where you can get champions and see how where you fell, uh, how where you fell, especially at level two. Like I said, I died in two hits from him, and I was like, I don't even know what hit me. <laughs> I was just like, wow, that guy just killed me. And then about the time I remember they added the champions, uh, he asked me, why does that guy have a crown on his head? <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. Yeah, champions. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Um, uh, Slayer, I'm at 51 to 750, uh, two or three of my rares out there, and six to 12 of the Explorers. So we're going to finish that off. Not sure if we're going to keep doing them on hard or not, but the XP was nice. All right. That's good here. <laughs> then my Shanderkai level 15. Assassin, I am still working on my Wayloon Prison stuff. Uh, Slayers, I'm 120 of 7,500. Yes, I did say 7,500. <laughs> Rare, 1 of 12. And the Orpheans Journals, I'm 10 of 24. And I also ran some quests with you, actually, on my Sh- Sh- Shatterkai level 15. Because you decided to run your l- level 15 iconic as well. That's right. So I ran a level 15 Morning Lord, and there we ran the Disciples of Shar, Escape Plan, and Magistrate's Office. And we actually did pretty good. We didn't have any major problems at all anywhere. What did you think about that? Because I know you're kind of in the same boat as me, other than our Iconics. I mean, our highest... Highest level is what, like 10? Yeah, my highest level is 9 right now. Yeah, okay. I couldn't remember if we were 9 or 10. I, can't, I couldn't remember if we leveled last week or not. But So, yeah, so what did you think of the level 15 iconics? Well, I uh, my always challenge is dealing with, shall we say, melee type. I'm still not completely used to those. So I finally learned how to start using spells, if I remember correctly, which is something that <laughs> I had a habit of not doing all that much with I know in my artificer for example well since I've got a crossbow a repeating crossbow I'm always using that I always forget that I have spells <laughs> so therefore here now I'm playing the cleric I was actually remembering to use the various cleric cleric spells and throwing down the various fire and light spells that you get in that class so therefore I at first I was thinking I was going to have the trouble being a melee class but then I remembered yes I don't have to do everything melee. 
that's right. <laughs> but of course, it, to me, it felt very much like playing a regular cleric. Though I didn't see much difference from that. I've never played a cleric, so I couldn't answer that question. But except the fact that I was using the Morning Lord's tree trait tree instead of the standard trait tree. Mm. Okay. See, also, um, I have my level 10 rogue, who is the one that is doing the crafting challenge with Lessa that she so graciously decided to uh, make me do a couple episodes ago when she was a guest. And uh, (laughs) we ran the Dr. Rushmore's Mansion, the Moving Targets, that uh, challenge. We did that like four times in a row because I need some items to get a ring. And we're still grinding that, but um, I kind of am starting to like that challenge, but I think it helps doing it with her because she knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it by myself, and it kind of went okay, but it was a lot better with her. So Lessa is awesome. That's all there is to say. What else did you do this week, finally, besides all the right. level 15 stuff that we did? Okay, on my Artificer level 9, the two of us ran a few dungeons, the Dead Predators, the Keeper's Sanctuary, where there was one room in the Keeper's Sanctuary that was completely and utterly ridiculous. I completely forgot we we did that stuff, actually. (laughs) Yeah, and in the Keeper's Sanctuary, that room was, they had these alcoves that were filled with, I don't know how many skeleton archers and the skeleton mages all shooting at us and you can't get into a position without being in the sights of about half a dozen of those at a time yeah that thing was crazy i will agree with you that is just an insane amount of uh it's not so much the archers it's the stupid mages that was the problem well yes especially when they <laughs> start throwing holds on you and you yeah right can't... as you oh no no it wasn't holds as much it was it were those gas clouds that they would yep row and that we will all suffocate from the gas clouds and lose our, all our constitution then the archers will then finish this off yeah the ai kind of knows how to kill players i guess <laughs> that's where its specialty is right there and on my level four artificer i ran the first three quests in the in the conspiracy where stand your ground dirty laundry and storm reaver fresco act so that's three of those down and hopefully i'll be able to finish that up with that character and that's your new permadeath character yes yes the permadeath character so level four so far so good then huh so far, so far, so good. And hopefully I get a little bit further along before it's time for me to switch to the Barbarian to do my comparisons. But I think what I'm going to do is I think I am going to have the conspiracy to be a regular part of the cycle of doing with the various permadeath characters to see how well each class does with it. All right, let's go into donations then. We have no Patreon donations this week, but if you would like to donate, you can go to the donations tab on our site. And as for feedback, we don't have any iTunes reviews. There is no iTunes love at all. Oh, (laughs) all right. Then I guess we'll have to worry about featured comments. And there was a featured comment for our 15 50 turbine point giveaway where Gums Gang says come on RNG no drac juju that's right the RNG but see anybody that's around me the RNG affects though so I'm just saying I'll try not to let it affect you but the RNG hates me I don't know what it is what I've ever done to the RNG I will never know yeah but in this case the RNG if everybody on the who posts the message there is affected by the drac juju wouldn't it affect everybody evenly therefore oh you do bring up a very logic point with that point yes <laughs> all right what's the next comment Mateus says thanks guys this would be a good Christmas present for my nephew oh yeah so I guess spoiler I- alert for his nephew if he wins yeah (laughs) and michael fellow guildy who does so much for the guild could really use this thank you and happy festival and lucas who says hey random number generator have you been working out you're looking pretty spiffy today (laughs) 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 and there's still time to uh enter our 1550 point giveaway if you would like you have until december 26th 
to enter, like we said earlier in the show, just go ahead and go to that post and leave a comment. And we will use random.org to determine the winner. So therefore, do not do not upset the folks at random.org before entering. <laughs> there you go. I promise I won't go and I won't go to random.org until the day of the contest. And then maybe my juju won't rub off. All right, very well. Let's go into our emails, which there aren't any, of course. <laughs> but if you would like to leave us an email, you can leave us one at podcast at ddoplayers.com. And you can also follow us at Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, and Pineleaf at Pineleaf Meals. And you have the Players Alliance shows three times a week at 8.30 p.m. server time. On Mondays, we have DDO Players News. On Thursdays, we have Guild Wars Players News. And on Saturdays, we have Lotro Players News. That's 8.30 p.m. Eastern, St- Eastern Standard Time, which is United States Eastern Time, of course. And you can join us for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Pine Leaf Needles reminding you to loot those treasure chests.